Hi everyone, welcome to St Albans Property Meet on Fazar February. Today we're doing Ask the Expert question and I've been fortunate and humbled to be asked to do that. So you're going to see a lot of content based on that. As you can see, if I've not come out of screen, there are quite a lot of entrepreneurs, especially property entrepreneurs here. So let's see all about the fun and I hope you enjoy the content. Hi everyone, first person of the night at Ask the Expert questions at St Albans Property Meet that we're here in February. I can't believe it after tax season. We've got Yvonne, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. And we've got Hannah, her daughter. It's first time on Little Recording. They're going to ask some questions. Hopefully I can give the answers. Let's start with yourself, Yvonne. Or... Hannah. Oh, do you want to start first? Hannah, go on. What advice do you give to young children? You want to get into property? Yeah. Excellent question, and you know this is an entrepreneur to come in the future. What I say is, invest in knowledge. Try to come to these events like this. A good thing is, do you play Monopoly? Yeah. Do you know why? Monopoly is a really good strategy. It gives you understanding on how to buy property, play a game, make it interesting, and then that will change your knowledge when you get into the real world, which is a bit like Monopoly, but with some formalities. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Got the thumbs up? Do I get a thumbs up? Yay. Everyone, tell us. Yeah, so I am an accountant as well, and I would Perfect. like to ask you, how can I get into the property accountancy? Okay. I, so Yvonne's question is, do you want to make a transition from industry to having knowledge around property accountancy and tax, I guess? Yes, right. The difference is, obviously, you're more on the commercial side when you're in industry, which I've done. And then when you go into practice, is learning the difference of dealing with owner managed businesses first. How that is done from an accounting perspective. Then it's understanding the tax implications, the difference between investment businesses and trading businesses. Because when you understand the difference, they have different accountancy and tax rules. So you need to understand those. And then how do you manage them? So I would as I was saying, maybe look at the YouTube channel where we got stuff, we put stuff on LinkedIn and break it down because you're not going to learn it in one go, right? So break it down. First, I would probably focus on personal tax. When you're doing your self-assessment, what can you claim? How can you structure it differently? Then the company implications, right? And then you can then start learning about LLPs, maybe trusts, pensions. There's a lot of stuff. So if you do it in sections, and also, you, you said you're involved in property yourself? Yes, that's right. Uh, yes. Have you got buy-to-lets? Yes, I have. Uh, do you, are they long-term lets? Do you like do ASTs? Yes, that's right. <coughs> uh, okay, so you know they've got their own unique rules. Yes. Uh, do you own them in your own name? Yes, my own name. Yes. Okay, so is it with you and your husband or just yourself? Just myself. Okay, so if you're a high-rate taxpayer, you're absolutely probably getting killed yeah, uh, on tax. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> right, one of the advices is understand how partnerships work. Right, you do need probably specialist advice, but what you can do is, depending on your yours and your husband's tax position, you may want to restructure that. So, if you is your husband high rate as well? Yes. So, if you're both high rate, then you need to think how to manage your income, because income has different set, uh, structures. Yeah. So, first is employment income, and property sits on top of it. Yes. It's stacked that way, but you can influence employment income in different ways. Do you contribute to pensions? Yes. yes. Right. So. Increasing the pension, right? I and there's that. different things you can do, yeah. and you can claim. Do you claim the relief on your tax return? I believe so. Yes. Uh, you, you will know if you did it. Do you do your own tax return, or yes. does? Yes. Do you probably are not doing it? Because the, that's one of the things. I did a post today. If you look at my LinkedIn okay. post, I mentioned some tips. Okay. Because a lot of people don't realise. Let's check pensions for a moment. So the question is, I'm doing a tax return, how do I save some money, right? If I'm an employee and I've got property income. One of the things you can do is, if you make a pension contribution, depending on what type of pension you're investing, that's where you need the knowledge, you can claim the higher rate relief on your self-assessment, you know, depending on what pension. Yes. Most people miss that. I know, I know. And I most, one of those. I'll give you an example in tax, how much you save people. On average, I've just done loads, it was tax season, is saving a thousand, two thousand pounds in their pocket in tax. Wow, wow. So it's not a small so number. Yeah. Also, you may even be able to save potentially what your income is, child benefit. Okay. 
because it you depends on your tax position. Because when you earn over fifty thousand yes. taxable income, not gross income, yeah. there's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. You can um, there's a clawback, but if you structure it and be smart, you could potentially claim that and not have the clawback. So a lot of money in the pocket there. Has that answered the question? Yes, thank you. Does so it much. help? Really and it. also, you say you're doing interesting stuff. You're working with a startup. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. And that's all across the world, especially people in the subcontinent. I know, especially in Pakistan. It's country I love. I love it because obviously my family are originally from Kashmir, Pakistan, hey. and obviously look at. Uh, we've done some posts. Have a look at the pictures. I'll show you the pictures. Beautiful part of the world, Thank bit you. like Colombia, Columbia, which you're originally yes. from, and you've been with your mum to Colombia, yeah? yeah? You are so lucky. <laughs> Where did you go in Colombia exactly? Cartagena in the north, Cartagena. Where is that exactly? Uh, Caribbean. By the Caribbean Sea. By the Caribbean. The, ah, is it near the West Indian side? Yes, that way. Because yeah. I wished it, ah, oh, I'd love to go. Yeah, I, I really want to visit so many places. Yeah. What's the capital of Colombia again? Bogota. Bogota. Bogota, right. Is that close where you are or no? no? I say, like an hour by flight. Wow, it's supposed to be a beautiful part of the world. Definitely. I think. You come. Oh, yeah. definitely. Have you enjoyed it? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Shukriya. Thank you. Thank Shukriya. <laughs> Hi everyone. I've got Hafiz. Nice to meet hey, you. Hey, Zee. How are you doing? He's also one of the ambassadors of the Settlement Property Network meeting, and he's got some key questions he's going to ask me. So, fire away. So, Zee, what I do, my property strategy, is serviced accommodation. Okay. I love looking after clients and love giving it. them a fantastic experience. What I do is a rent to rent strategy. So, so it's lower funding required to get in. Yes. But I have to furnish the flats completely, everything in there. Right. So it costs me every apartment six, seven, eight thousand pounds at least, depending on what I buy. Okay. Can I claim capital allowances for that expenditure? And what are the regulations for that? Great question. I'm going to break that down because there's a few aspects for the audience as well. Okay. So rent to rent for people who don't understand is that you have a landlord who rents it to you on a sublease potentially and then you own the control the asset and then you rent it either on a yes. daily rental. Daily, or weekly, rental. monthly basis. Right. Yeah. So the, that's what a rent to rent is. Yes. That's and correct. there's different types of capital allowances. So I'm going to break capital allowances as a first part Please. because there's two free parts to this. Right. Once you know what rent to rent, capital allowances, what uh, Hafiz is talking about is two parts. Is There's one when you purchase a property, which he doesn't qualify because he doesn't own it. And the second is on the refurb. The refurb, in order to qualify, right, you need a surveyor to run a report on it. Okay. okay. But it's only valuable if you meet the criteria of service accommodation. Yep. Right. And that's what I'm interested in. Exactly. And the criteria of service accommodation is very clear. And most people get this uh, messed up a bit and they don't get this right. You can't have someone more than 30 days yep. living in a calendar year. Yep. That's very important. Right. Because if you have a more, you do not qualify and that doesn't part So the my process. guests are mainly short term stays. Okay. Fish. Like a week, a, a month, a few days. Okay. So long as they meet the criteria and there's a few other pieces of criteria I'm going to just roll them off yeah 210 days open for service accommodation all year right? round okay and then at least 105 days actually uh, rented out okay okay uh, those are some of the key criteria they also match when it's two right? days a week basically okay so then when you do that and provided you meet the criteria of that then it's a qualifying trade for service accommodation stroke furnished holiday let. Yep. The difference between furnished holiday let and service accommodation is whether it is service accommodation. Why do I want service accommodation rather than furnished holiday let? Is if I'm working in a job, yep. right, I can use tax advantages and I've done a whole speech in SAS London, so watch my YouTube going specifically over okay. that. And you can do something called a sideways relief and claim tax back potentially against your job oh, as well okay. so there is a difference All but right. you've got to make sure it meets the criteria so the job is for the person who's staying there or for me so if i've got employment income and i'm getting taxed as, source, as what as what as an employee somewhere right, okay. and i've got a service accommodation business right if I make a loss okay. in the service accommodation and i meet the criteria i can carry that loss back why do i mention that because you said capital allowances if i claim capital allowances that's quite a big cost. I'm probably going to wipe out my profit from a tax perspective, 
then I've got a choice to do a sideways in that year and claim back my income tax and my employment okay. and criteria. This is quite advanced. I always recommend get advice from a property tax specialist. I'm giving you the overview, but it's bespoke on your situation, provided you meet the criteria. So there's a lot to it. That's but, brilliant, that's good. But this is how you add value. That gives me, um, that gives me food for thought. Yes. And how far can you go back? In is what, there a time thing? Or? For the refurbishment? Well, just generally, like... So if you're going to claim capital allowances in your own Not day, property, not property. Oh, sorry, it's not for buying a property, but it's for like... The renovations? The, yeah, yeah. So from a tax perspective, you have, if you, is it in your own name? The what? property, the rent to rent, or is it in a company? The business is in my company name. Right, so... And, uh, and I rent them out, uh, sorry, I rent them in my company name. So if you rent them in the company name, you can't do a sideways, that's if you have it in okay, your own name. Fine. But if you do in the company, normally you can amend a return, right? right? So you normally have two years after the year end date to be able okay. to go amend it and do it. So what right, happens okay. is if you don't... I've had them for three years, so I've missed a year. So you miss the year that it's done. Yeah. So they can go and amend it. But what I would recommend is make sure the counting and the tax is understood. Yes. Because a generalist accountant or a generalist tax advisor will not understand necessarily what I've talked about because this is property specific. Property has its own tax rules. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. So in your I've, case, you've I've got, got a lot, lot of advantages. I have a lot of accountants in the family, but they're more corporate accountants. Yeah, I've done both. accounts so business, understand. so yeah. yeah and it's and very it, different. And, and it's the difference between trading and what we call property businesses. And Asset, property assets and trading, yeah. You know, because property businesses can be different as well. Like the property development is a trading business. And many people don't know that. Property investment okay. is an investment business. Yeah. It has yeah. total different tax yeah. rates. Okay. Yeah, provided yeah. it meets that. And I did a whole episode on Sky on this. We've got guides right. and YouTube uh, videos. Okay. We've got over 700 videos those. now on YouTube. Wow. Right? So we have a lot of stuff. So a lot of people utilize it. So watch that stuff. Try to get a bit of knowledge. I know you do that. And then try to think how to utilize this. Okay. Because there's huge benefits. Especially capital allowances, one of my favorite areas. I think I did a whole episode on capital allowances with a Lamborghini in central oh. London. You won't miss that one. Excellent. Is that Zee, thank you very much. Thank you. I hope Great you got knowledge. value. I did. We've got some more people in the RC expert section on the inaugural St. Albans property event, which has got this uh, uh, service available. We've got Felix. Hi, Hi. Felix. Nice to, nice to meet you. And Joshua. And they've got some questions around property, tax, and all the other fun. Felix, you asked me a specific question around. I did. See, so how did you get into social media, first of all? As an entrepreneur, if you're not involved in social media, I talk a lot about growing trading businesses because that's how you generate cash. And if people don't know how good you are or what you do and what value you add, you've got no business. And social media is fundamental now. We're on all the platforms. And for me, if you don't advocate social media, you're losing a lot of value. And people look at your stuff, like you guys will, and you'll be like, oh, that's value. Oh, that guy actually is useful, or that lady's useful. And that's how you can sell services, businesses, as well as good businesses. So social media, that's the driver. And for me, it's then adding value and giving my view on the world, which is quite empowering and also quite humbling as well. So one of the other things, recently I was voted top 100 UK account and tax advisors on LinkedIn, which blew me because I thought they were making it up, but it won't, it's true, <laughs> right? So uh, thank you. Mm. Uh, I don't know what it means, but it seems like it's important. <laughs> so hopefully that answers the question. Mm. Got some more questions around business and tax. So actually, far right. Social media is exactly kind of what inspired us to some extent. Wow. Like kind of going on YouTube. In fact, it was Josh initially that inspired mm. me to get into to uh, property. Yeah. It's himself, uh, Is there anyone in first. particular you follow? There's more. I mean, if one follow uh, Ranjan, we both watch Ranjan. Uh, yeah. We all know yeah. Ranjan Bhattacharya. <laughs> watch my property, Baker Street meet, where we're VIPs and we do a lot of content yeah. there. Yeah. Have you been yeah. to the Baker Street meet? Have not. not yet, Come next yeah. week, Saturday, uh, Wednesday the 7th. Okay. Excellent. We'll if you meet there. me, I'll introduce you. Okay. Right, okay. him and Andrew Roberts, they add huge value. Mm. Ranjan, don't forget, I don't always forget about you, right? But it's really important because these people are knowledgeable and they give huge amount of knowledge, especially yeah. around commercial property yeah. and all the benefits, which are huge, by the way, mm -hmm. for tax. So, okay, well, and what yes, other uh, things? Here's a yeah. question. Yeah, We're in service accommodation, right? Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of people talking about the different reliefs when you're looking at VAT. Right. Do you want to sort us all in touch? about toms and whether to use toms or not toms and, and so forth. Really then, good know, question. Like, this is quite a specialist question on VAT of service accommodation. So the general rule is, if you meet the criteria of furnish holiday let or service accommodation and your revenue is over 85,000, you must be VAT registered. And many people don't understand that. That's the general rule. These gentlemen have asked about TOMS, which is the Tour Operating Margin Scheme, which is a special VAT aspect. Yes, there is opportunities there to structure your VAT and it changes the thresholds. It is quite complex and it does need evaluation and specialist advice on your stuff. If you are doing potentially rent to rent, you've got an opportunity. But the disadvantages are, yes, you may charge a less VAT because it's done on the margin, which is the difference, not on the gross sale. But the disadvantages is capital allowances because you can't necessarily claim capital allowances because of how the VAT is structured. Mm. It really depends on that because the whole agreements have to be done differently when you are doing it with uh, the landlord, right? So there's pros and cons. Mm. And generally, there's a trade-off whether you're going to save income tax rate, corporation tax, or VAT mm. on the way it's structured. Mm. Yeah. There isn't a really a way, from my understanding, to do both. Mm. And you need to have special rules to meet the TOM criteria. Yeah. So that requires specialist VAT advice on your scenario. Mm. I see a lot of training providers, no disrespect, who start giving tax advice, which is completely not right. Yeah, because they just say, oh, you can do this, this. No, your scenario has to be evaluated, mm. especially when you're doing a specialist scenario. Because mm. later, if you do an, have a dreaded HMRC inquiry, if you haven't spent time and got the advice at that time and made sure you meet the criteria, you may get yourself in problems. Yeah. Does that sort of answer yeah, the question? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. yeah, so there is a very, really powerful scheme yeah, yeah. if done properly. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm allowed to say scheme. Yeah. I've heard a few people, um, not even a few people, one idea is what about longer term stays? Right. Um, is there, do you still have to pay VAT if it stays over 30 days, over 60 days, or something like that? Right, really good question. There's different aspects. From a VAT perspective, right, the VAT changes after 28 days, 28 on days. the 29th day. Mm -hmm. It actually becomes slightly different because certain parts of it are no longer vatable. Yeah. So you have to get it. And sometimes it can drop the VAT from 20 to 4%, potentially, okay. right? depending on your circumstances. Can you have those long -term or medium term bookings mixed in with the short term bookings on the same company? You can, but it changes the criteria whether you can claim reliefs against corporation tax Yeah, in a company. Okay. That's the problem. Because okay. if you go over 30 days in 12 months, and I was speaking to a gentleman before about this, and it's a common thing, if the same person rents the property with more than 30 days, then you fail the criteria of uh, claiming something called capital allowances or okay. because it's no longer service accommodation from a tax perspective. Yeah. People often make this mess up because they get people in there for two or three months and they say service accommodation is not from a tax perspective. Mm. So you've got to be careful. So you have to differentiate between our booking. So we've got a four day booking, five day booking, three month booking in the same property. Yeah. You have to differentiate between those because they all have different tax implications. Exactly, but it also can affect your status of your company as well okay. because your property is now no longer necessarily a trading business potentially for short term lets. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah? There's a CGT potentially issue on a sale, okay. for example, or if you put, when you exit. So you've got to think about end to end whether all the different funds are tax issues, also about VAT there, corporation tax, income yeah. tax in your own business, and capital gains tax, and potentially inheritance tax, yeah. which is a whole different ball game, by the way. The threshold of inheritance tax is different than capital gains tax. Most service accommodation business and furnish holiday lets do not qualify for the relief for inheritance tax, which is unusual because it normally mirrors the similar rules for capital gains tax. Yeah, and there's been a case on this where I think one person met it, but the judge made the ruling so high, the threshold, in reality, most people will not meet it. So you need to understand what you're doing in the business, preparing it if you are preparing for an exit, also what reliefs you're claiming, because capital allowances generally is one of the biggest reliefs 
for any tax, mm. uh, property tax uh, aspects or uh, entrepreneur that you can get. Mm. It's equivalent to depreciation in the States. Yeah. Mm. We don't get that in the UK. So when you say capital allowances, what are you referring to? Capital allowances either on the purchase, if you buy an asset, okay. that qualifies, okay. I emphasize, or on the refurbishment. Mm -hmm. So if I give you an example, I'm giving them an example of buy to lets. If I have a buy to let, so I can't claim capital allowances. Mm -hmm. All the cost of refurb goes to the balance sheet. I can only claim it on the sale. Got you, but our furniture, but in for example. Furniture, all of yeah. service accommodation, you can claim it as per survey report. And if your account and stroke tax advisor understands how to claim it. So there's two parts to it. And you can depreciate that as well? Uh, it's not, the depreciation is different to uh, capital allowances, okay. but it's equivalent. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's what we call in the UK how we claim it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. We, depreciation is not a tax deductible expense in the UK. Capital allowances is how yes. we do it. Okay. Now yeah, you understand sense. the yeah. difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Watch my video on the Lamborghini with talking about capital allowances <laughs> in central London. I've got it on YouTube. Okay. I'm trying to differentiate yeah. because that is one of your biggest benefits as a property entrepreneur. Yeah. And do you know what happens? Most people don't. Mm. I did a presentation on this and I'll stop on this one because I can go on forever. Is you can still earn one million pound tax free in the UK. And most people are like, really? Yes. Depending on how you structure your business and using something called LLPs. Depending on your property strategy. Yeah. So you have to understand your property strategy and then understand what you're going to do and then structure it. That's where you get huge benefits. Mm. Try to earn a million pound and see how much tax you would pay. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Oh, yeah. 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 Does that make sense? It does. I know we covered a lot there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Any more? That's all I have. Okay. I keep yeah. harping on about Tom's, but I hear there's been quite a few cases of people getting taken into court, being investigated regarding Tom's. Yeah, Tom, do you know so what? The, the yeah. Tom's was for the toll operating margin scheme for people who used to travel around Europe. That's where yeah. it came from and that's where they do it. Hence why toll operating margin scheme. Makes sense. But then yeah. it's been applied to property and there's been a lot of test cases. A lot of people will not even give you advice on it yeah. because they don't know. It's just like, I'm going to throw this out, it's like bubble tea. Yeah. You go and ask someone to give you that advice on bubble tea, tell me the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. HMRC refused to give the answer yeah. and they told you something rubbish and most people, because it's not been tested yet. And until those court cases go through, people are doing it based on uh, knowledge, yeah. right? They're, even they're trying to give it, but generally until there's a ruling, we don't know always which way it will go. Because it depends on the activity, does it meet the criteria? and there's specific rules whether it meets it, that's where the evaluation is. And is it favorable subsequently to do it? Mm. Yeah, so, because I've given you a bit of the concept as well, side. So get the advice from the best bit around that and make sure it's sound advice. Because ultimately, it's not generally the account tax advisor who's responsible, it's the, unless they give you written advice, then their professional indemnity should cover it. Mm. But you don't want to hate your mask in case. No. <laughs> Let someone else have that one and then you get the benefits. <laughs> right? I always say don't be the first. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they're giving the rules, so those cases as they go, mm. there will be outcomes and then there'll be rules. Because Parliament do one thing. HMRC say something else. I know HMRC follow me. I'm just stating the facts, right? But the key thing is what the case judges make decisions. That is what is the ultimate deciding. Yeah, and if they then because that's the rule, that's how you apply it. But does, does that make that sense? Yeah, sense. and that's where you need the advice someone is doing that, and then also the protection, which I was talking about. If there is an inquiry and in that, you've got the appropriate defense. My number one thing do you speak to HMRC yourselves? No, 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 no. perfect answer. <laughs> it's just like when you see the police and they ask you a question, you get a lawyer to speak to them. Yeah. Who's got more power, the police or HMRC? Mm. Obviously HMRC, yeah, they, money talks. Yeah. Um. His, his Majesty's Revenue and Customs, Parsi, her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. We're run on tax, my friends. Mm. That's the income. So always get advice, get the right people to deal with it. That's my message. Okay. Yeah, and hopefully you've got some insight of a few yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Perfect. Yeah, Thank, you, really. Thank you, Billy. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Thank Follow you. us on LinkedIn and we'll tag you in. Yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah for sure. Thank Hi, everyone. We've got another property entrepreneur at St. Albans Property Network Meet, which is going viral. And after this, you'll see it. Chris. Hi. Nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you, too. And, and you've got some questions. Chris is a property entrepreneur. Uh, and you got some questions, Chris. I do, name, yes. Name us. So, 
basically, my question is more about the buy, refurb, refinance strategy, and when I'm going to be after the refinancing, I'm looking at either renting it out or doing like a service accommodation. And in all honesty, it's all about wanting to see what's probably the most effective way of being able to get that income and reinvesting it and Excellent. sort of seeing what, what, what way is the best way of doing that. Fantastic question. So Chris is asking whether the Brewer strategy, buy, refer, refinance and rent, depending on what it is, how applicable it is to him and how he can utilize it by keeping uh, some of the benefits. So first of all, when you refinance, yep. right, obviously that's a debt loan. And if it's in a limited company, the finance costs are uh, tax deductible, okay. uh, i.e. the interest costs, and obviously the cash is the cash. So there's yeah. no tax implication on that necessarily. The next question is, how do you structure the business so you can actually benefit from the uplift or the refurbishment investment? Yeah. Exactly. That's what you're yeah. asking. Yeah. If you're doing buy to lets or HMOs, right, unlikely you're gonna get any benefit because that will go on the balance sheet. Okay. Right, from an accountancy and the tax perspective, it will not be an expense on the profit and loss. Okay. So, you know so, what it, so, so, you so basically I wouldn't be able to use that money to minimize to, your tax or corporation tax in the year. And, and, and to buy another house or anything like that. Uh, no, because the, the money that you spent, right, would only get a benefit when you sell the property. Right, yeah? okay. So corporation tax will be on when you sell yep. and a capital gain. Okay, right? so. The other bit is, if you use it for service accommodation, yep. right, or furnish holiday lets, uh, and potentially commercial property depending on what you're doing, the rules totally change. Okay. Right? Provided it meets the criteria, you can do something called a capital allowance claim okay, right, yeah. on the refurb and the purchase potentially, which is huge. I've done a video on that specifically with a Lambo, Central London, watch it on YouTube, and that explains where you can get potential tax benefits to claim it against corporation tax. You do need a tax advisor, stroke accountant who actually knows how to do it. Yep. Also, you need a capital allowance surveyor, which we work with, because they've got to do a survey report and then we use the tax treatment because not all the hundred pound of the refurb is going to be beneficial because if it's structure, that gets disallowed. Right, okay, yeah, for yeah. the claim. So this is how you can save money. The other bit is on the acquisition of those properties that I've just spoken to you, you can claim on the acquisition potentially as well. Right. That's how you make money you make in property money, yeah. because then your taxable profit is different to what we call the accounting profit. Yeah. And yeah, you exactly get taxed so. on taxable profit, not on your accounting profit. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that this is how sense. you make money. This is why people love coming see me and yeah. talking about this. Yeah, exactly. And that's value. But it requires the knowledge of how to do this. Yeah. And having that strategy on acquisition, the journey, and what potential exits. And in terms of obviously getting that advice from a tax expert, yep. such as, I mean, is there specific, are there specific tax people who are just for property? Well, where would you advise that I get the advice? Uh, you're talking to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, exactly. uh, Normally you get a specialist who specializes in property. Okay, so right? specializes in property. A uh, so. good process of finding people is platforms like LinkedIn, YouTube, because there's not many that are out there saying to people about social media. Why do we go on social media, give value away to people? It's because people don't know what you, what they don't know. Exactly. So the yeah. investing in knowledge first is so important. The investing in knowledge will then drive your mindset and then the advice. Then go the appropriate person after you've vetted them, you understood what they're saying and they seem like they know what they're talking about because you won't necessarily know and then get an advice meeting and normally it won't be free, but the value will be huge. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. you need the advice and then the implementation. Well, exactly, yeah. Because yeah. there's no point getting advice that you're not going to implement. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and they're two different parts. So you need someone who does a fact find, can give you the initial advice, then how they're going to implement it and the plan. Because if they do that, then you're at huge value and then you'll save a lot of more money. Fantastic. And that's where it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? definitely. Makes Brilliant. sense? That doesn't need Any more questions? No, that, that was mainly it, because that, that's where, where we're structuring the business in. So yeah, that, and that was it. There's a different benefits, by the way. Watch, um, I've done a lot of stuff if it was on Sky TV, so watch those, okay, they're on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. We've got loads of guides on there. Read those, watch those, and it can add a huge value. Fantastic, brilliant. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got some more property entrepreneurs who want to get on the big screen. We've got Kush, nice to meet you, Kush. Nice to meet you. And Gavin, nice to meet, nice to meet you. you. And we're going to talk about 
they've got a few property strategies and we're going to talk about something called associate companies and they were like what are you talking about Z? Associate companies become really important to our famous PM Rishi Sunak who introduced this rule from the 1st of April 2023 and many people don't realize what this means. What this means is that for corporation tax any company that you own and you've got more than 55% control, ownership uh, or economic understanding, very complex, but it's one of those, is that they group them for profit. And the threshold change, because corporation tax has not got one rate anymore. It's 19% up to 50,000. From 50,000 to 250,000 is 26.5%. And over 250,000 profit this is, it is 25%. So people don't realise that 50 to 250 is quite painful because it's clawing back. Yeah. And it's then split across all the different companies. Previously, that used to only really apply to group structures. Yeah? But now, any company, whether it's in the group or not. So if you've got a group structure or you've got companies that you're using, you've got two companies, the parent company provided trading is excluded, exempt, hint, right? But the two subsidiaries are so that 50 grand becomes 25,000 each, 125,000 each, do you see? Yeah. And this is quite not important knowledge mm. because you need to manage it effectively. And especially when you, like these entrepreneurs who are doing service accommodation, rent to service accommodation and deal sourcing, which I've met a lot of people doing, they've got implications. And generally, if they've had good advice, they split it up into different companies because of different implications of the strategies. Normally, VAT being a big challenge. So this becomes quite painful yeah. if you haven't learned about this and got the right advice. The other thing which I was mentioning is pensions, right? So if you've got employment income, pensions is your friend. And believe it or not, I say this, I don't know if they're going to be, it is sexy stuff, it's not boring stuff. Believe me, pensions is one of your biggest friends if you know how to use it. Because you have a limited company, depending on your resources, and how much you've done, you can have some a special type of pension. And I would watch the Sky TV episode, which I talk about. It's called a SAS pension. Have you heard of SAS pension? No, no. Small ad administrative uh, self, um, no. small administrative pension scheme, right? Um, and the SAS pension has special rules, right? Uh, and the reason why it has special rules is you need tend to have a limited company, right? And the limited company becomes a sponsor. Why is the SAS? because you control it. And therefore, potentially, you can loan money from your pension into your company. One huge advantage. You can't do that with any other uh, pension schemes, right? And that is why it's quite huge, the SAS, yeah? And you know, you've got to think about this, and this is why you need to uh, look at it. Yeah, small administrative self so a scheme, I forgot the name of it now for a moment, right? And you do that because then you become a bank yourself. Because that money, say I've got 100 grand in my pension, I potentially could loan 50 grand, charge interest, which is tax deductible against my corporation tax, goes into my pension, and I love this part, no tax in the pension, no income tax, no corporation tax, no capital gains tax, no inheritance tax, not much left. That's why you have to understand the journey. And when I talk about unlocking financial freedom, which I was talking about these guys, I've done podcasts with John Howard, and I've got Ranjan, if he's watching, he's gonna come hopefully do one as well. And what we talk about is the entrepreneur journey. The entrepreneur journey, trading business, like your deal sourcing, create enough money, utilize pensions, and then utilize SPV, special purpose vehicles, and they are companies that own uh, held property structure it then you've got three sources of income because now you're diversified this is a 5 10 15 20 year journey that's how you become an entrepreneur in the modern day system then you take advantage of all the relief exemptions and all the other fund of tax yeah, yeah. if you don't think like that unfortunately you're working for our friends hmrc which is your choice has that been valuable, guys? Legend, I'm yeah. trying to give you some insight on where you need to go invest. And I always say, invest in knowledge, invest in knowledge, invest in knowledge. I'm saying that because people don't invest. So understand your property strategies. Yeah. 
then understand the implications to these property searches, both how to run them operationally, systems, solutions, then your financial implications, that's both accountancy tax, structure, then think about how am I going to exit, how am I going to utilize all this money. If you think like that, I guarantee the compound uplift, you will be successful. Many people don't. And that's why I spend all my time talking to entrepreneurs and talking about which I enjoy because I'm trying to change their mindset. But that's how you've got to do it. And then all your knowledge you've learned is valuable because that pound that you make is so hard. If you're losing 50 to 80% of it in tax, for example, or not running your operations well, what are you doing? Yeah, and if you structure and you can keep some of that and use it to invest, you're going to make money more money because compound is huge isn't it they say oh, compound so. interest is the eighth wonder in the world it is especially if you become your own bank the pensions helps you become your own bank that's how you've got to start thinking and then there's legacy you're both young men but you've got to, when you get married you've got kids and or you're thinking legacy but if you think about it now based on the current inheritance tax rules that's a dirty nasty tax and it may change, but they will have a different version of something. Because it gets them 40%. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't apply to your trading businesses, uh, deal sourcing, but it applies to your property business going forward. Okay. Like inheritance that. Yeah. Has that been useful? Very helpful. Any yeah. other questions, guys? Because I just talk, as we all know. <laughs> right? Are there any more questions that you got that you want to know, answer big time to? Putting them on the spot. They did ask me loads of questions, by the way. <laughs> That's why I'm giving the answers. Yeah, so obviously we're starting off our serve. We've got full rent service accommodations. We're sourcing deals. Yeah. We have, at the moment, we have it in one company. As you were saying, put it in two different companies. What steps going forward can we do from today to make our tax life a little bit better? The reason why I'm saying this is it depends on you make sure you structure accordingly because they've got different trades, okay. right? And they've got different implications. Yeah. So this is why we're stating this, okay. right? It's not necessarily a tax advantage, it's a commercial aspect of your business as well, right? So that's why it's quite busy. So I would use group structures, potentially having a parent company and a subsidiary. So it's just basically getting the advice, weighing up the pros and cons, and then going from there. Okay. Yeah? Yes. And then knowing why you're doing stuff, what the benefits are and what's the cost in relation to the benefit. Yeah. That's how you evaluate. Then get the right accountant tax advisor to help you because they're going to be an important part. Part of your power team also, potentially a good legal person that talks and a good financing person. And make sure they've got a, a team. I'm biased, but your accountant tax advisor should be leading that process because they're the ones you're going to have a relationship on a regular basis, not yeah. just a transactional. If it's a transactional, like I hear a lot of people doing online and all the rest of it, which I was talking, it's transactional. If it's transactional, you've got no relationship, where's the benefit? It's a two-way thing. Just as the account, uh, you vet, uh, vet your account tax advisor, they should be vetting you as well. Yeah. Because you can only add value to so many people. Okay. Does Sounds that great. make sense? Yes, 100%. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Enjoy the thank thing. You so much. Connect on LinkedIn and we're basically, these guys are looking for deals. So if you do have deals for property sourcing, looking at service accommodation, they're doing the different types of schemes, they're doing rent TSA, they're also looking potentially for property deals. So I'll be tagging them in and maybe liaise and use all the social media. All right? Thank you. Thanks. Wow, what an evening. So many entrepreneurs, so much content, so many questions. I hope everyone's got value from it. And we love the Beach House staff as well. We've been really helpful. So thank you so much. And what a great settlements property network meet. The Arctic Expert inaugural event. We'd like to thank Craig and Julie. They were great hosts as always. And everyone who provided content. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up. Hope you like and comment on the, the content and uh, got value from it. And let us know if there's anything else in the comments below. Thank you so much.